The New York Stock Exchange is a powerhouse of American business, but one of the most high-profile finance hubs is also known for having nearly all-male staff. Well, Lauren Simmons is the only full-time female trader on the floor. At 23, she's also its youngest. Karina Huber caught up with her to find out what it's like to join this major boys club. Karina began by asking about her journey to Wall Street. What I know is numbers are universal and it's a universal language and because of that it only made sense to join the trading floor. Now I looked at your LinkedIn page and your last job was as a, a sales manager at the department store Saks Fifth Avenue. How did you go from that job to this one because it's your first job in finance? It is. So for me that was a job that I did in college and I graduated, knew I wanted to come to New York. I did not want to stay in a sales role, uh, but that did help me a lot, especially with talking with clients, dealing with numbers and math. Uh, so there is a lot of overlap, but obviously one is retail and one is finance. So those are, you know, two different things. And how did you go about getting this first job? Through networking, I reached out to a couple of people that were in New York that were alumni from my college. And I had applied for a job that was told no to, but they said, we do have another opportunity, one being on the trading floor, would that be of interest to you? And they brought me down, I interviewed, and it's been a whirlwind ever since. <laughs> what is it that you like best about your job? I like the fact that it is fast, it is challenging. Every day I come into work, it's something new. Every it's not the same thing routine every single day and um, the community that's down here everyone is very close that's down here and it's a really healthy work environment you say it's a very healthy work environment but I know that historically Wall Street has not been known to be an old boys club yes. a lot of bro talk on the floor and I remember one person describing it as sort of like when you're a woman on the floor sort of like being a gazelle in the savannah surrounded by lions yes. circling you yes. and I experienced that in the past is that culture the same way today you know when I first came down here I would say anybody that's a female that's new everyone you know is curious about um, but as the year has gone on I would say that everyone here is you know they're like a big brother they want to see you they want to see you do good and they treat you as such we you know treat each other with respect they have the utmost respect for me and vice versa and they're really pushing me to grow into you know a big financial person uh, if it's not just on the floor but just within the industry in general nevertheless the numbers are still very small only 10 percent of traders are female and for african-american women the numbers are even lower why do you think it is so low when you walk into a room especially new york stock exchange you know as a female if you're a trader there aren't going to be too many other female traders and they're going to be even less minorities and i think when people get out of being okay with things aren't going to be comfortable being okay with being uncomfortable it will push people to come and join the trading floor or come and join male dominated industries and you know and that's where the growth and everything else comes into place if it's a question of being comfortable with being uncomfortable, if that's what it takes to have more diversity, I think yes. how is that going to happen? Is it about role models? It's about role models. It's about being okay that your mentor isn't going to look like you and that the growth is going to come from yourself. Being okay to knowing that no one's going to look like you and just going in front of people and, and just pushing yourself to a bigger standard which is one of the reasons why I came down here. I kind of got out of my mind. I was qualified. They liked me. And I knew that I, myself, just needed to do the job. I had all the qualifications. I just needed to do the job. And I give that same advice to any young person that wants to come into the field. Do you think Me Too is having an impact? You know, we have had open conversations down here on the floor with Me Too. And I can honestly say the men down here, they have daughters, they have wives. They themselves were taken aback by what was going on and what has been going on. So if you heard someone saying something inappropriate, because yeah. in the past women felt they couldn't really say anything because they wanted to be accepted and promoted within the industry, mm -hmm. how would you respond? We are very open down here. So if there is something that is 
inappropriate or you take a second look at, we will, I will call you out on it, other people will call you out on it. It's an open conversation. There are a lot of apologies. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. Um, so it's, it's no hiding away from if something makes you uncomfortable. It's just having that direct conversation and moving forward. You were the second African-American woman to sign the book that contains the Constitution for the New York Stock Exchange. How big of a moment was that for you? It was a huge moment. I think it was a bigger moment that I got to be able to sign the book and my mom was there. She's from Georgia. I mean, my entire family, but especially my mom. Um, it was a lot of pictures. It was, you know, a moment that's a moment. I know people say that it's a historical moment, but when you're in that moment, it's not necessarily historical. It's just a proud achievement that I'll be, be able to always have. I suspect that you will want more than just being a trader. Yes. <laughs> so where do you see yourself going with this career? Uh, probably a couple more years down here and then going into wealth management. That's where I see myself going into. Is that where the money is? Yeah. <laughs>